Hello again, fans of Nabu. I'm going to give you some hardware information after I managed to do a little bit of spelunking in my shed and found a whole pile of stuff that wasn't with the stuff that I previously found, one of which is a whole set of cables, which includes one, two, three, four, five joysticks. Ah, ah, ah. We have two keyboard cables, and these are NABU adapter cables down here. These are going to talk about in just a moment because they go on CabSurf systems, so they're not in the consumer ones. Um, but this guy here you might be interested in, and I'm going to start with it in just a moment. But first, a word from our sponsors. Take a look at these things here. My wife has been an absolute doll. This whole week has been absolutely crazy. My stuff is all over the place, every available surface. As you see, I'm in my uh, kitchen. There's a table in my living room full of Nabu stuff. There's stuff, all, every surface in the basement is covered in Nabu stuff or potential Nabu stuff. Anyway, this she's has a pottery uh, show tomorrow at Lansdowne Park in Ottawa at the Coliseum. Uh, sorry, at the Horticulture Building. Uh, that's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, it'll be nice if you step by and support the Auto Guild of Potters, not just her. Um, and the other one is I'd really like to thank my employer, Erickson, who gave me emergency paid time off um, in order to deal with all of this stuff, to get all of this stuff out of the way so that you guys will have something to play with when you get your NABUs and something to play with hardware-wise um, when you get your NABUs. So uh, I just wanted to, to, to uh, I just wanted to thank my, um, uh, my manager, Sumit, and I'm, I, I've got a co-op student that, at Ericsson that has been following the project and he really wants to take part. So he's going to help me do some of the stuff that would really, really, really help. He's going to clean up my source code and he's going to clean up one of these NABUs. <laughs> and I'm going to let him use it for as long as he can, well, a long-term loan for as long as he can use it uh, and, until he gets his own NABU. And then I'll pass this on to somebody else and let somebody else have fun with it. So I just want to show uh, the configuration now. This is what the cab search system looked like, or actually a development system looked like when it was deployed. Um, the, the floppy on top, the drive A, is, is hooked up to the target NABU. The bottom is the host, and the top is the target. So we're just going to sort of flip around, this, and you can see there's a bunch of water that obviously, and something rusty dripped on this, so somebody's going to have to take care of it, something fierce. But I just want to move around here, and I stupidly put a chair in the way, so I'm just going to get it out. And then, hey, there's a cat, wow. Um, so I, I hooked up everything, but I didn't turn anything on. So everybody who says, don't turn it on, I'm not gonna turn it on. But I wanted to show how it was. See, if this is one of the NABU adapter cables, but look, at it's very special because somebody has done surgery on it. That means that it's a crossover cable. Any time we saw one of these, we knew it was a crossover cable, so we didn't actually have to mark them. Um, if they're straight throughs, going all the way back here, they won't have any of that damage. It won't be weird like that. So like getting back to the screen, without tripping over another NABU, uh, so we have a crossover going from one to another. And this, it, this big one is the hard drive connector, and that goes down to the hard drive connector. Now I have to correct something from the last show. I said I had three DB25s, which meant three RS-232 ports. That was incorrect. In fact, one of the DB25 ports, which I'm pulling out there, and if I can get really close, whoop, we can look at it. It says disc. And I went, oh, that's just my hair there. I'm not probably in the connector. But basically, that meant that DB25, which is normally an RS-232 port, is actually a printer or a, a, a floppy drive port. And it ha turns into, <laughs> I'm going to unplug this cable just to show you how crazy it is. It turns into a DB25, which you would think was RS-232, to this DB37, I think they are. <laughs> I don't know what count, somebody can count the pins for me, but I think it's a DB37. Um, that's crazy. So this is what I was missing the other day. And I had a sleepless night going, I'm missing something. There's something wrong with what I told them. And this is it. And this was on our cab serve systems and the development systems. And that would interface this floppy here to the NABU system. So this is the high, the, the, the high density floppy, the double sided one. So that's why that is. And I wanted to correct that because if people were wondering, then now they don't have to wonder. Um, now, these guys are all the uh, hard, uh, these guys are all uh, hard drive cables, but 
That was so cool. We we had branded cables. Isn't that cool? I love having branded cables. It's very Samsung or Apple to do it, but they just put a sticker on. I imagine there was some guy with a big hot iron doing this somewhere at the back, some Nabu warehouse when we got the cables, but probably there's manufactured. Um, so now I br that brings me to this guy, which is the printer cable. And if you notice, it has this weird DB15 on one side and that interfaces to a Centronics connector. Cool enough, but that's confusing everybody. So that I managed to do a little bit. So I'm just gonna quickly show which port that is. It's marked so you guys will know. Um, there it is. Ooh, printer, right there. So that printer, all of the NABUs have this. So making a cable gives you another interface, well, a parallel interface, which means you can hook it up to an MX80, an RX80, um, and, uh, you know, MX100, all those series, actually any printer that accepts Centronics Parallel. Um, and I just wanted to find, I have another cable nearby, but I have done the pinouts for that cable. I opened it up. So here we go. What I I can give you the pinouts. I, I checked these with the with that little guy, that little scope there. Um, the pinouts are one to eleven on the Centronics, match one to eleven on the DB15, and nineteen and twenty are tied together on a Centronics to DB uh, to to pin fifteen on the DB15. Do that. Make yourself a cable. One end being a Centronics and the other one being a standard RS232 cable. Uh, actually, a, a male RS232. Sorry, our male DB15, um, uh, then uh, everything will work. So the, we made all these cables, as you can see, actually, if you look at it, was managed, where did I put it down? Uh, is basically uh, managed by, uh, uh, built by hand. And I think somewhere at NABU in Ottawa, they were doing that, maybe in Elmont. Exactly. They, those ones were, they, they were, these were all custom cables. You can see that. Uh, they were put together from other cables. The hard drive cable was turned into a floppy cable by somebody. I'm going to not do the pinouts on this right now because you guys don't need to know that because very few people will ever see the high-density floppy interface. But if people want it, put it in the comments. I'll I'll rip one apart and you can have it, uh, the, the, the pinouts for it. Um, so, oh yeah, here. So basically, there's the, there's, the, there's the printer cable together, tied together. Um, I'm going to give one to, uh, anybody can make these, so I don't, I'm going to give one to, to, to DJ probably just because it's a, a NABU one, but there it is right there. So one to 11 on the Centronics matches one to 11 on the DB15 and 19 and 20 on the Centronics are tied to the, uh, 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 15 on the DB15. Um, I checked those and I went, I used that, as I said, I used that, uh, multimeter to check continuity on all the, all the lines. That, that, that's the computer that I'm going to uh, give to Ben uh, to clean up. So he's going to have a job ahead of him. Uh, he's going to get a floppy interface, but he's going to get no floppy because the floppy is going elsewhere. This floppy I tried to make work. Let me see. Everybody's going to go, I'm power you're powering it on now. And uh, um, I am for just a moment. Let's see if that TV will go on. Okay, and as you can see, the drive doesn't, it goes on, but it doesn't go off. So I think it's stuck somehow. I don't think it, I think it's mechanically needs a little bit of work. I don't have time to do it. Uh, you, you guys want software and I want to get it to you. And this, making this work is going to, it's just a distraction. So I will give it to somebody who can make hardware work. Once I find somebody local, hopefully. Um, now that so based and then it, 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 it tells me adapter or floppy disk failure. So this particular NABU has a floppy disk ROM in it. Now remember, in reality, uh, in, like this one here on the bottom, uh, uh, the CabServe system actually has a hard drive uh, cable in it too, and it that's what it interfaces with these cables. These cables, like they they got really rusty, but but if you look at the pins, they're clean because they're made out of gold or gold plated anyway. Um, I thought that was just nice that they're, while they're crushed and so on, they're still functioning and the continuity actually works. Um, I think that's it for today. And uh, if you have any questions, leave them in comments. I do read them and I try to answer the ones that I can. I don't know everything about hardware. I freely admit I'm, I'm basically a hardware ape uh, and I manhandle and wreck everything and so on. 
Um, so if anybody has any suggestions for what to do stuff, I will read them and try to digest them. But if you try to tell me that I should be cleaning up in this specific way, uh, no, I'm going to get somebody else to do the cleanup work. Anyway, thanks for listening, and it's been nice talking to you once again.